Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how a pro rescues bad images in Lightroom. I have a number of different examples to share with you in this video. First, I'm going to show you how a professional photographer deals with exposure problems. I have this image that is overexposed and I have this image that is underexposed. Next, I'm going to show you how a pro deals with white balance problems. I have this image that is too blue and I have this image that is too yellow. Finally, I'm going to show you how a pro deals with images that have distracting backgrounds. Okay, let's start with our exposure problems. I have this image that is overexposed. Now, first of all, all of these are unedited RAW files. They're pretty much straight out of camera. Now, what I would do is if I had an image that was overexposed such as this, I would probably yell at myself for screwing up the exposure. Then I would deal with it. The first thing I would do is I would go to the basic tab in Lightroom and I would take highlights all the way down to minus 100 and shadows all the way up to plus 100. Then I'll go to the exposure slider and I'll move it to the left and I'll just eyeball the image until it looks like I have proper exposure. Once I have proper exposure, then I'll get a white and black point in the way I normally would. I like to hold in the Option Cam on Mac, it's Alt Key on a PC, click on the white slider. When I do, I get a screen that is totally black. I'll move the white slider to the right, and eventually you'll start seeing some color come through. That means I'm blowing out the highlights or clipping the highlights in those areas. I don't like to clip highlights, so I'll just back that off until all or most of that color dissipates. And to me, that's a perfect white point. I'll do the same thing for the blacks slider by holding in that alt option key, clicking on the black slider. This time I get a, a screen that's entirely white. I'll move this to the left until I see some color come through. That means I'm crushing the shadows in those areas. I actually don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. So to me, that's a perfect black point. Now, next, as I look at the image, it's poorly composed as well. It's off center. It's crooked. So I'm going to go to the crop tool. And first, I'll straighten it real quick by just going off the image to the right a little bit and just kind of pushing up on the, the right-hand side to straighten it. And then I'm going to go and pull it in this way and make it tighter. Move it around like that. Have both of those turkeys on the rule of third vertical lines. I think that looks pretty good. Double check the straightness. I guess that's okay. And that's good. Now, let's continue uh, with my edit. I'll go to masking. And I want to mask the subject. Hopefully it finds the turkeys, and it did. And what I'll do is I'll go to effects, and I like to add some texture to feathers. So I'm going to add some texture. Maybe I'll add a little clarity. And then I think we'll go to detail, and we'll just add a tiny bit of sharpness. I think I'll go to color, and I'm going to add some saturation to those turkeys. Like that. And I think I'll finish it off by adding a dark vignette. So I'll go to effects and I'll go to the amount slider for vignette and I'll move it to left. I like to add a dark vignette on my images because people tend to look at the brighter part of the images. And if you add just a little bit of a darker vignette around the edges, it will help encourage people to look more towards the middle of the image. And it just gives them a more pleasurable viewing experience, which means they'll like your image more like they're more likely like your image. So that's why I do that. So Here's before, overexposed, and there's after. Now, how do I deal with an image that is underexposed? Well, I do it in a very similar way. I'll go to the basic tab and I'll immediately, as before, take the highlight slider all the way down to minus 100. And I'll move the shadow slider all the way up to plus 100. Then what I'll do is I'll go to the exposure slider and instead of moving it to the left like I did for the image that was overexposed, I'll move this to the right. And I'll just eyeball the image till it looks like it's properly exposed. Looks like it's properly exposed right about there. Then I'll get a white and black point the same way I normally do. Hold in that Alt Option key, click on whites, move this to the right. I already kind of got some color coming through. Try to back it off. Maybe back it off a little more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Then we'll get the black point, move this to the left, get some crushing the shadows a little bit in here, but that's okay. I don't mind doing that. Let's add some clarity, some texture. Let's go to the color mixer and go to luminance and let's make the yellow components in the picture a little brighter and green a little darker. Let's make blue a little darker. Let's go to saturation and add some saturation to the yellows, add some saturation to the oranges. 
And then I think we'll just finish this right off. We're going to go to the effects and we're going to add that dark vignette like I typically do. And there it is. And there's before, underexposed. And there's after. Before, after might be just a little bit dark maybe. So I could come and push exposure up just a tiny bit. And there's before and there's after. All right. Now, how do I deal with white balance issues? Now, of course, Lightroom has a bunch of white balance tools. If you go to the basic tab, you know, you have the eyedropper, you have two sliders, you have the drop down. You could adjust white balance a number of different ways. The way I like to do it, though, is a bit different, is I like to go to the tone curve. This image obviously is too blue. So what I'll do is I'll go to the blue curve. And if you look at the blue curve, you, of course, have this diagonal line. Top left-hand side above the diagonal line in this square, you'll notice it has a blue shading. The lower right-hand side below the diagonal line, you'll notice will have a yellow shading. What you can do is if you have an image that is too blue, put a point right in the middle of the blue curve's diagonal line and move it towards yellow. If you move it towards yellow, you're adding yellow and you're taking blue away. So just move it this way. And I just eyeball it till I look at like those white clouds up in here and I just move it till it looks like I have white clouds. And it looks like I adjusted the white balance very quickly by just doing that. Okay, now let's just continue with my edit. I'll go to the basic tab. Um, well, first it's a little bit crooked. I'll go to the crop tool again. I'll just come off the image to the right till I get this double arrow and just straighten it so it's nice and straight. Then I'll go and I'll take highlights down, I'll put up the shadows, get a white point holding that option or alt key and getting a black point. Maybe not that much. Then I'll add some clarity and some texture. And I'll go down to effects and I'll add a darker vignette. And maybe just make it just a touch brighter like that. And there, there's before. And there's after. And there's before. And there's after. All right, now, how do you deal with an image that is too yellow? Well, the same thing. I'll go to that tone curve, and again, I'll go to the blue curve. But because this is too yellow, I need to move the diagonal line towards blue. So put a point right in the middle, and then move it towards blue. And I'll just look at that white fur on her face, and I'll just move this till it looks like that white fur is white. <laughs> and that's right about there. I think that looks pretty good. Then I'll do my edit as I normally would. I'll go to highlights, pull those down a little bit, open up the shadows a little bit, or quite a bit. Then I'll get a white point. And I'll get a black point. I'll go to masking. And I'm going to mask the subject. Hopefully it catches her. And it caught most of her. I could add to the mask with a brush. And add this part here. Just like that. No big deal. It's not much really. I, I really didn't need to do that. Because really all I'm doing here is I'm going to effects. I like to, to effects. I like to add some texture to her fur. Some clarity to fur, and then go to color, and we'll add some saturation. And we'll finish everything off by going down here. We close that down actually, and we'll go down here to effects, and we'll add a darker vignette. And maybe it's a little bit dark. We'll just add a little bit of brightness. And there we go. There's before, and there is after. There's before, and there's after. Now, Obviously, I had one image that was too blue and one image that was too yellow, and I took care of both of those by going to the blue curve. If you have an image that is too red or too cyan, you would go to the red curve, and you would move this diagonal line accordingly. If it's too cyan, move it towards red. If it's too red, move it towards cyan. If you have an image that is too red or too magenta, go to the red curve. If it's too magenta, move it towards red. If it's too um, red, move it towards magenta, and you could take care of the white balance issues like that. Now, this one's going to be a, the most difficult one. I have this background that is really noisy, and there's like bottles coming out of her head and a plant coming out of his ear over here and, and all this. I shot it at f8. I obviously should have used f2.8, right? Or at least position them in a different way. Now, what I would do first is I would get rid of as much of the background as I can. So, again, this is an unedited RAW file. I'm going to go to the Crop tool first, and I'm going to crop this vertical. So I'm going to tap the X key on my keyboard so that I have a vertical crop. Now, obviously, the 2 to 3 ratio is too narrow. 
So what I'll do is I'll go to this drop down and I'll make it a four by five. And that makes it a bit wider. And then I'm going to pull this up till this rule of third line at the top, this horizontal rule of third line at the top is right across our eyes. And I'll just pull it to the left a little bit so they're more in the middle. And like that. So I cropped it. Now I need to deal with this background probably before I do much editing. Actually, let me go back to the crop. It is very slightly crooked as well. Just a tiny bit. Straighten it. All right. I need to deal with this um, background. But what you need to look for is sometimes around the edges, like of his head, there's these hot spots. Try to get rid of those before you do anything else. So I'm going to go to the remove tools. I'm actually going to go to the very first tool, the actual remove tool. I'm not going to use generative AI and I'm not going to detect objects. And I'm just going to take the brush. I'm going to go right here and paint right there. Got rid of that. And I'm going to paint right there. And see what that does. Got rid of that hot spot. Get rid of this hot spot. So get rid of the hot spots that are coming out of their head, basically, is what you want to do. So see if we could deal with this one as well. And I don't like what it did there. So I could refresh that. Refresh it again. It might be a little better. Um, I don't know. Do that. See if that helps. Okay, that might be a tiny bit better. I don't know. I'm going to delete it, though. I'm going to delete the next one, too. Sometimes you need to just start over and come in here like this. Let me just see what that does. See, it's got this hot spot still in there. I actually did this before I did this video, just to make sure, and it worked first time when I did it ahead of time whoops that didn't look right did it all right might have to just deal with this the way it is so this last try all right I'll just get rid of that we're just going to leave it there and then you could see what happens when you have a hot spot there all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to close down that tool we're going to go to lens blur and i'm going to click apply so we're going to blur the background now it has to do a depth map. It may take a while on your computer. It really is hardware dependent. And once it does the depth map, uh, you'll be able then to apply a blur amount. So I'm going to kind of blur that out. I'm going to blur it out quite a bit. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'll go to masking and I'm going to mask the background. Now, again, this might take a second to find that background. And then once it does, what I want to do is it's still looking you can see right here it's still circling okay i finally found the background is we're going to go to tone and we're going to take exposure down and it's taking a second to kick in there we go so we got it down not that much we bring it up we're going to take uh highlights down try to get rid of some of those specular highlights back there Try to minimize those. You could tell you're taking whites down a little bit too. It looks a little better. So now we've made the background less distracting. Now I'll continue with my edit uh, as I normally would. They look a tiny bit yellow uh, to me. So I'm going to go to the tone curve, go to the blue curve. I'm going to put a point right in the middle. I'm just going to move it very slightly towards blue. Make sure her white dress is white. His white shirt is white. Then um, I'll do a quick edit here as well. I'm going to bring highlights down. I'll put up shadows. My computer is being very sluggish. I need to upgrade my iMac very soon. I'm going to get a white point by clicking on the white slider by holding in the option key on my Mac. Move this to the right. I see some color come through. Back it off until it dissipates. Same thing for this. Move it this way. That looks pretty good. And... Typically at this point, I'm not going to do it now because my computer is so sluggish. I would do masking for their uh, facial features, like I'd sharpen his beard and sharpen his hair. I'd bring out their irises more. I'd whiten their teeth if needed. I really don't need to do it on them. But um, if I needed to do skin smoothing on people, I would do that. I don't need to do it on them. But that's what I would do next. But because my computer is so sluggish right now, I'm not going to do that. What I will do is just globally, I'll move clarity up and texture up which I probably wouldn't do that typically. I would instead do something in masking if I wanted to move either of those. And we'll bring vibrance up. 
like that. And then we'll finish this off with a darker vignette like that. So there is before and there is after. There is before and there is after. And one more time, there's before and there's after. So you can see I minimized the distracting background. Uh, there's still a little bit kind of this highlight here is bothering me, a little highlight in here is bothering me. But if I tried to use the remove tool now after doing the depth um, lens blur, after doing lens blur and after doing the masking for the background, it, it would take forever on my computer. Your computer hopefully is a lot faster. If I did this video on my MacBook, which is like a year old, it would go very quickly. But my iMac, which is getting up there now, um, it's just a lot slower. But that's how I deal with images that I should have captured correct in camera and didn't. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.